So with everything happening around Israel, even in the way we see things taking shape in the world, many people falling away from the faith, and the prophecy that before Christ returns, the world will become godless. And that's what we're seeing, a godless society rising. Anyone who has studied the Bible can see how we are so close to what Jesus described as the period before his return. Now, what does that have to do with Israel and what is taking place today? Well, according to scripture, we know that before that great day, the world is going to be looking for a human figure to bring Middle East peace. And I think it would be wise to examine potential systems, governments, entities that will champion a new state of peace in Israel. And this is important because scripture says that in the end times, all eyes will be on the region of Jerusalem. Okay, the nations will be brought against Jerusalem. But before that destruction comes, there will be cries of peace and safety. We know that the nations are going to eventually try to attack Jerusalem, but before that, there will be a seemingly false type of peace, a temporary peace. So are we now seeing the groundwork being laid for peace to come about that will seem to be the solution to what we are now seeing in the world? And that's why today will be an interesting video because we're going to look at one interesting figure who I think may have something to do with the peace to come. And uh, there are many other figures that we could explore as well, and perhaps we will. The figure that we're going to look at today is one who you could probably expect will arise again in the near future. Jared Kushner. Yes, we have explored some of his work in the past, uh, back in the Trump administration. We actually had a few documentaries uh, covering the Abraham Accords, Jared Kushner, his rise and involvement in the administration to broker these peace deals at the time. And one thing that you will find is that even after the Trump administration, Kushner still continued to work a lot in bringing about peace among Middle Eastern nations. Uh, we see that uh, he even launched a organization uh, referred to as Affinity uh, Group, which is to bring about economic cohesion among these parties. And we see that even today, he is in the news again, discussing ways that uh, peace can come about in light of what we're now seeing taking place. He was recently featured on a panel and some interesting things came to light here. During the Trump presidency, Kushner unveiled a $50 billion economic plan that many were on board with to bring about a peace among those nations. And that was supposed to take place. It says that this plan was, was supposed to be implemented, but only if there was a future political peace agreement that was to be made. So the big deals that we saw during the Trump presidency were really laying the foundation for a future big peace agreement. The thing about that is, Kushner never got a chance to see that realized because Trump did not become the president for a second term. That was the expectation. And Kushner was then supposed to help to bring about a huge peace deal that this $50 billion plan was to involve. However, it is very likely that Trump could be reelected. You know, we see in the polls that he is leading. So it is very likely that Trump um, will be president again, which would then allow for the future political peace agreement to take place, which is why there was a $50 billion economic plan made during the first term, which would allow for a type of peace that we have not seen there. So this is interesting. Could that lead to a temporary peace in the region? And it should be said that if Trump is reelected, I think there is no doubt that Jared would have to be involved. One of the biggest issues that will solidify the presidential candidate is how they will deal with the current crisis in Israel. And who better on Trump's team to handle such an issue than Jared? who has known Netanyahu for pretty much his entire life. Um, we saw that in that first documentary. He grew up being friends with uh, the family of his. He also is of Israeli ancestry. So he has a lot invested 
even culturally. So it would seem fitting that he would come on board with Trump as some type of senior advisor again, perhaps even vice president, or maybe even secretary of state. Results. You need new ideas. You need to create the ideas and force them. You can't just wait for them to occur and then go back to the old institutions and the old people who have failed before. Who do you think should be secretary of state in the next administration? I think Jared uh, should. I think Jared uh, should. No. I think Jared, he could do a pretty Jared, good job. Let me, let me ask you about the two, two states. So again, it is very likely that Jared will be back to fill a peace agreement that was really initiated in 2019 with the $50 billion investment. And Jared has huge plans for business in the restructuring of Israel. He has recently said that here. Either rebuild, number one, it has to be conditions based. Again, we've put tens of billions of dollars into this situation, right? And one reason is because Jared knows that um, a new business minded leadership would be needed in the region. I think one of the problems is a lot of the people working on this don't have business backgrounds. They understand, you know, human rights or they understand politics, but uh, they don't understand capitalism and they don't understand what kind of framework you need in order to allow a society to thrive. And it's no secret that he himself, you know, is a business magnet, a brilliant strategist when it comes to business and uh, accumulating uh, revenue. Uh, we see that, you know, his background is in that field. And so uh, he's, you know, really someone, if you listen to him talk, we're going to have a few of his recent interviews in the description. And uh, you can click the links to see some of his recent comments uh, with the Israel situation. And you will see that he is a very brilliant, articulate man. And he's done his homework. And so it seems as if he is preparing to become re-engaged in the political sphere. And we're seeing that as how, you know, he is now really speaking out again. If you have uh, the Abraham Accords continuing and, and everyone coming together, um, that's something that obviously people uh, will want to stop. So uh, the attacks were absolutely vicious, terrible um, that occurred. And, um, and that's really what was meant to be. So uh, still a lot of possibilities for, for progress and positivity. Uh, but right now, obviously, this is a very uh, important moment. In light of the attack, the Abraham Accords are more important than ever. Uh, clearly, this is one of the hardest problem sets that's existed probably in, in geopolitics. But the, the end state has to look something like this. This is the beginning of the end of the Arab-Israeli conflict. And it's the beginning of togetherness, which, again, you think about how much war, how much provocation, how much terrorism has been made in the name of, of, of religious conflict. This is, I think, the start of the process of religious respect and understanding. I do think having a deal where we can say, how do you know, the Jews and the Muslims, Christians come together, the more countries that have diplomatic relations with Israel, the more Muslims and Arabs that should be able to come and, and visit. And by the way, the more you have these normalizations, think about what that will do to the economy of the West Bank, where they'll have you know, great hotels, hospitality, uh, tremendous tourism industry because of all the Christian, Muslim, uh, and Jewish holy sites that they have there. So th there's a lot of potential there. We just have to like get unstuck. And so we will see, will there be a peace before a sudden destruction? We know that the scripture says that before the Antichrist rises, there will be some type of peace. And so what we are seeing may have something to do with a temporary peace that is said to come. Now, what do I think? Do I think it would be a great thing if there's this great peace plan that is initiated and it has something to do with what the Bible says will happen in the end times? Absolutely, I think it'll be great. That just means we're closer to the end. That means we're closer to seeing our Lord come. So when you start seeing these peace talks and you start to see uh, these agreements being made, it's just the fulfillment of prophecy, which is great. I would say, hey, anything that can bring about the fulfillment of prophecy, let's get on board and let's get this thing rolling. Most of us are ready to see Jesus face to face anyways. So this is good news. It's not scary news. We're just seeing things happen as the Bible says it would. You know, the war that we're seeing now, when the Bible said that, you know, the nations would start to 
attack Jerusalem and things of that sort, we're seeing the building blocks to that. When the Bible says that the Antichrist will influence the nations to turn against God's people, we are seeing the building blocks to that. When the Bible says that all nations will fight against Jerusalem, we are now seeing the building blocks for how that can take place. So it's amazing to see how these things are shaping up. And the next three years, my friends, will be very interesting to say the least. And I think that the best thing that we can do is stay in prayer, keep seeking God. And even when you fall short and stumble, sin, don't give up. No, because God loves you and is like the dad in the story of the prodigal son. He described the father as someone who is always there with open arms. So no matter what you're going through, ups, downs, return to him, keep praying, stay close to him, because the way things are going in our world, we likely will be seeing him soon, face to face. God bless you.